and welcome to another episode of Pet Central, where we have one dog who can catch poachers, one dog who can paint, and kitty cosplay from Japan. Just wait till you see it. Here we go. And now for another session of Ask the Vet, where our vets answer your questions. Now for this week, we have a question from Alex Law, who asks, now, why do cats try and fit into small boxes which they can't possibly ever fit into? Oh, Mr. Law, you must know the expression that curiosity killed the cat. And cats by nature are very, very curious. So if you've got a small box, it's a super, super toy for a cat to try and get inside. Now, whether it can get inside or not is a separate um, issue. but. Cats like to play. The um, cats generally sleep about 14 hours a day. They eat a third of their life, so the rest of their life they're there, they're there to play. And an empty cardboard box is a perfect, it's a super toy for a cat. And I actually tell clients to get a cardboard box, cut a hole in it, so the cats can run in and around and through the box. Or if it's a small box in this case, put a little thing inside it, a little ping pong ball, a little bit of food, something that makes a noise so that when they get in there there's actually something in there that they can remember they're predatory hunters they can stalk hunt and kill and the best thing for a cat is to be able to catch something in that box so if you've got a little bit of food in there that will give them really wonderful stimulation it's a super behavior toy and it's cheap <laughs> thanks dr taylor now remember if you have a question that you want answered just hop onto our Facebook and post it with the hashtag AskTheVet. And hopefully we'll pick your question and get back to you next time. <laughs> Japan is known for many things. Anime, unique designer goods and cosplay being just some of them. And wow, have they ever come together in this somewhat quirky animal trend. With arguably Japan's favorite anime cat, Doraemon's new movie hitting theaters, McDonald's Japan decided to get in on the promotion and launch a Happy Meal set featuring six different toys associated with the Doraemon character and new film. However, things took a turn for the well, cosplay. One of the toys featured in the kids' Happy Meal set is a replica of Doraemon's collar, which according to McDonald's Japan, was originally intended to be used by kids as a dress-up toy. And yes, it even features the classic ding sound. <laughs> However, soon cat owners started to realize that if they put the collar on their own cats, they would get an instant Doraemon cat of their own. As a result, not only kids, but also adult cat owners are buying the Happy Meal set in droves. Just on the off chance, that they too can score a Doraemon collar for their own cats. Since this craze, Instagram has exploded with cats wearing the Doraemon collar with one grown up owner saying, I wanted the happy set so badly that I went there all by myself for lunch. The collar's a little too big so it falls off, but I managed to get it on. As well as another saying, for those of you with cats, you should go out and get a McDonald's happy set quick. Not only will it fill you up, but you can get your hands on this happy little item here. Now, we don't think any kitties were harmed in these photos, and we do agree that the collars look very cute for a quick cosplay photo. Now, we wouldn't advise using it as a full-time collar or forcing it on your cat if they're not into it. But until then, this has got to be one of the most bizarre cat trends that we've seen in a while. <laughs> Soccer is a serious sport in many countries, and for multiple World Cup winning nation Brazil, this is no exception. However, things took a touching and lighthearted turn recently when the players weren't the only ones to grace the pitch. During a heated championship match between the Oesta and Capivariano teams, a joyful pup interrupted the game by running straight onto the pitch. However, despite the tight game, no one seemed to mind too much as the friendly dog simply melted everyone's hearts. This was only accented with the game's announcer remarking, it's not just the players who want to show talent here, the dog is also part of the show. However, the game did need to continue, so a player then carefully picked up the dog 
and passed him to another teammate who carried him off the field with a big smile as the crowd cheered on. What made this moment even more significant was that the announcer then said to all those watching at home, be good to an animal, to a dog. It's the least a human being can do to give back all that they give us. Well, we here at Pet Central couldn't agree more. Good on you, Brazil. The world has seen many a great painter. Da Vinci, Picasso, Dali, the list goes on. However, we have a painter on our hands who isn't quite what you'd be expecting. Meet Dagger, who some are calling Dog Vinci, who proves that humans aren't the only ones who are capable of expressing themselves through art. Now, how can a dog paint, you ask? Apparently, Dagger, an adorable lab mix who was going to be a highly trained assistant dog for canine companions of independence, was observing his human owner Yvonne paint, when all of a sudden he started nudging her. Yvonne was quoted as saying, Dagger, do you want to paint? And then his tail started to wag, so she said, okay. She handed Dagger the brush, which he took in his mouth, and lo and behold, he started painting away. But the story does not end there, with the pooch now a hit in the New York art scene, with his painting selling from 50 to 200 US a piece. Now the best thing about all this is that the profits all go to Canine Companions for Independence. Now, I may not know art, but I do know what I like. Way to go, Da Vinci. Poachers beware, there is a top cop in town and there is no escape. This cop however is none other than Raga, a former so called bad dog who has stopped poachers in the African nation of Zambia with amazing results. The German Shepherd mix started life as an unloved puppy which gave him an angry and aggressive streak in later years. However, after being adopted as Zambia's first anti-poaching canine, things have really worked out for the little guy. And he is now a very much loved, very good dog, who has helped stop and capture a staggering 150 poachers since 2014. Rugger was found by conservative biologist Megan Parker in a shelter where he was considered a hard to handle pup, which made his chances of being adopted minimal. However, his strong character is what led Parker to give him a chance, which as mentioned before, paid off. Trained by Parker and others at Working Dogs for Conservation, Rugger will signal when he has found weapons or ivory by staring and drawing attention to the place where the contraband is hidden. So powerful is his sense of smell that Rugger has even found a small piece of ivory hidden in a matchbox. So this just goes to show that a bad dog can be turned around and do good. Or in this case, help tackle the horrible poaching problem in Zambia. Good work, Roger. And that's it for another episode of Pet Central. Now don't forget to check out our steady stream of videos on YouTube and hit subscribe below. Bye.